Polish football hooligans are renowned for some of the worst violence the game has ever seen. A lot of people have died in this country from, from the hooligans. They have close links with the extreme right wing and Nazi groups. Your ringtone is a speech from of Hitler. And are feared throughout Europe. It really is like uh, like martial law has been declared. It's that threatening. I've traveled here to Krakow in Poland to find out why it's such a problem and to come face to face with some of the most violent fans in the business. Krakow is a beautiful city. In fact, it's a world heritage site. Tourists flock here for its history and its stunning architecture. However, I'm not here to sample the culture. I'm off to a railway station on the outskirts of town to meet some of Europe's most violent football hooligans. I'm about to get my first taste of the problem here by joining an elite squad of riot police. They're going to make sure that any violence here is immediately stamped out. There's some 300 guys tooling up right now to uh, go to the football match. Uh, they've got shotguns, tear gas, batons. Um, they're all wearing uh, body armor. They look more like they're about to invade a country rather than actually police a football match. The visiting Lech Poznan supporters have such a reputation for trouble that they will be met on the outskirts of the city and escorted all the way to the ground. I'm stunned at the police presence here just to meet a few hundred fans. Today, one of the local Krakow teams, Wiesła Krakow, are playing Lech Poznan. <laughs> The Lex supporters have traveled over 400 kilometers to get this far. Once they arrive here, they'll be searched and put onto police buses and driven, escorted to the ground. And I have to say, if I arrived at this railway station, I wouldn't be getting off the train. I'd be staying on it and going home. The shout's just gone down that the uh, train is five minutes away, so the guy's now putting their helmets on. These guys are not messing about. You can really feel there's an energy here now, and... Uh, element of that anticipation. The train we've been waiting for some time has finally arrived. These supporters have been on that train for five hours. Football hooliganism in Poland is well planned. Amongst the ordinary supporters are the hardline leaders and organizers who coordinate the violence. I expect that some of those guys there are trying to hide their, their faces. Police reception seems to have had its effect on them. Uh, you know, the, the detectives said if they're not chanting, then we've won the first battle. So they're not singing at the moment. Um, police won, supporters nil. So far. to the ground, we're in convoy. I have to say this entire thing has been organized uh, like a military exercise. Uh, highly organized, um, extremely efficient, um, quite exciting. At the Wieswa Stadium, the visiting Lex supporters are searched again. To avoid any contact with the home supporters, they're herded into their enclosure two hours before the home fans are let into the ground. 
The security is so tight that once inside the ground, the Lex supporters are caged in and surrounded by high fences and private security. On either side of them are the home Vizwa fans, and clearly, there is no love lost. Uh, Lex supporters, there's not many of them, but they're certainly making up for the fact. Uh, every time the Vizwa fans shout, Vizwa, these guys shout back, whore. Within seconds of kickoff, trouble erupts on the home side terraces. Unable to get to the visiting Lex fans, Vizwa take on the security guards employed to keep the rival gangs apart. I'm surprised at how quickly the violence escalates. Things are being thrown. It's only five minutes into the gang. They've got the tear gas going off. It has seriously kicked off. Police went in there within seconds. They, are, they don't hang around here. As the home Vizwa fans battle with the security guards, the visiting supporters keep up their chance. supporters try to kick through the steel fence that separates them from their rivals. Police in white helmets are deployed into the ground to prevent a full-scale riot. Well, the football stopped for a period of time because the leg players nearly pushed that wall down. And I would say, no security, don't look like there's enough of them because uh, heavily outnumbered, heavily outnumbered by the fans here. Someone who knows a lot about Polish hooligans is British journalist Bob Graham. I've arranged to meet him at the match. Bob, what we just saw behind us, was that typical of, of, of Polish football? Very normal Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening game. Happens all the time. It's traditional tribal, traditional rivalry, hatred. And you see from the use of, of the, the batons that the police use, how much hatred is, is, uh, is felt between one team and the other, and they're getting in the, in the middle of it all. We've had a, um, a hooligan problem in the UK for many, many years. How hard are these guys? How do they rate? They are hard. Hard in terms of, of, of the destructiveness of them. They hurt people, they stab people. There are a lot of, a lot of people who have died in this country from, from the hooligans. But why has Poland got such a bad problem with hooligans? It's a, it's a phenomenon that, that goes back to, to the Second World War and then with, through the, the communist era. And to understand it, you need to go back to the post-communist towns that have been neglected and left almost to, 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 to total neglect, where the only thing that, that a lot of young people have got is violence and hatred and, and this, this animosity between one another. It's obvious the violence is endemic. The levels of hatred seem out of control, and I want to find out why. Well, taking on Bob's advice, we've decided to try and get to the root of the problem. So we're going to leave Krakow, which is down here, and make our way up to a place called Gorzhov, which is virtually on the German border. Apparently, there's a gang of notorious football hooligans there called the Steel on Fighters, and um, we're going to try and make contact with them.
Gorzów is said to be Poland's forgotten city. It's had a turbulent past. Before World War II, it was part of Hitler's Germany. In 1945, during their push to capture Berlin, the Russian army flattened the city. When Gorzhov was rebuilt, it fell to the austere eye of the communist planners. This is Poland's grassroots, and home to a gang of hooligans who have a fearsome reputation for violence on and off the pitch. I want to meet them and to find out why they fight and why Poland is struggling to control them. I've been put in touch with a man called Tomek. He claims to have contact with the local hooligans, the steel on fighters. But our presence here is already causing trouble. So, what happened to your face? No, it's the chłopakami, którzy tam zawsze stoją na lejce. Po prostu przywitałem się, cześć, cześć. Oni już wiedzieli, że kręcimy tutaj film, co nie się zaczęło tako. Oni byli pijani, ja byłem wstawiony. So, you actually got beaten up because of us? Nie, to były takie może nie, nie z waszego powodu, tylko że bez z, z, za, zaciągnięcia u nich zdania jakiegoś, bez tego. Przez ostatnie trzy lata Stilon zrobił swoją dobrą chuligankę i im woda sodowa do głowy odbiła. Stilon Gorzow may be a third division team, but the Stilon fighters have a reputation for fighting well above their weight. I thought that meeting up with them may have been difficult. I needn't have worried. They already knew exactly where we were. So how long have you lived here? You have to stop filming now because they've asked us they're going to going to hurt us, so we're going to stop filming. It just kicked off, and we've been left in no mind other than the fact that we are really, really not wanted here. We were talking to Tomek, then all of a sudden, one guy turns up, starts pushing the camera, then another one turns up. And obviously, that's the way they operate in gangs. Um, then all of a sudden, there was more than three or four. There were about 12 to 15 of them. Um, and they were the steel on fighters. These are the guys that, uh, the hoolies as they call themselves, for the local football team here. And we thought because we were Tomek, we'd be okay, but obviously we weren't. So uh, we've upset them. So we have to leave. The steel on fighters are determined to stop us filming them. But we're not giving up just yet. Yes, mate. Our research has found that this city has several right-wing groups, some of which are connected to the Steel on Fighters. To get to meet these hooligans, I'm going to have to mix with some pretty unsavory characters. I've come to Poland to meet up with some of the most violent football gangs in Europe. I've already witnessed the level of their violence at a match in Krakow. Now I'm in Gorzów, where my first attempt to meet the local hooligans led to confrontation. In order to get in with the steel on fighters, I've traveled to the other side of town, where our research has uncovered some of their neo-Nazi friends. Going up to meet them, I mean, the guy I'm supposed to be meeting is a guy called Python, and they're twins. There's Python 1 and there's Python 2. And obviously they're like letting everyone know that they're here, because that's your white power sign. Python. Ross Kemp, This gang is part of a rising tide of fascism sweeping Poland. They don't regard themselves as hooligans, but as skinheads. They fight alongside the Steel on Fighters and support the same football team, but have different beliefs. So, 
Python 1, can you tell me what made you take up this, this ideology? What, what caused you to want to be the way that you are? I don't like any other races. For example, when I come to the street, for example, on the street, or something. It nerves me. Everywhere I go, I hate them. And I just don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like them. I've not seen any black people here. So why did you just like them out of interest? I just don't like any other race. I don't like the color of the skin. I don't like them in my city. I think the asphalt has its own place. Right. What about what about Jewish people? Do you just like them as well? Tak, ponieważ że do wszystkiego się pchają, chcieli by stać się na najwyższym podium. Państwo własnego nie ma. But but guys, this place, Poland's famous for having concentration camps, isn't it? Do się tam ich miejsce było. Za mało chyba. Nie wszystkich wygazowali. No, enough of them were gassed. Powinni to powtórzyć. They should repeat it, yeah. You guys are involved with the football guys in the town, and you get involved in the punch-ups. Is that true? No, yes, to prawda. Robimy sobie też trochę po chuliganicie. Idziemy też na ustawki. Dami staramy się. No i dobrze nam to całkiem wychodzi. No liczymy się jakoś, nie? Wiadomo, w naszym województwie i ogólnie słychać się nas w Polsce. Na mecze jak idziemy, to każdy przeważnie się obawia, na przykład już teraz. Lubimy adrenalinę po prostu. Uwielbiamy to. Można powiedzieć hobby, nie? The communist-backed chemical plant called Stilon used to provide most of the employment in the city. Now unemployment in Gorzhov runs at around 20%. Since the collapse of communism, there's been a rapid rise in right-wing groups throughout Poland. The boys are meeting up with other Nazi sympathizers at a local pub, and I've been invited to tag along. Promoting Nazi ideology in Poland is illegal, but here the whole gang are blatantly wearing 88 T-shirts. Eight represents H, the eighth letter of the alphabet. 88 is short for Heil Hitler. I saw a black girl come in there earlier with a white man. And that you went up and you told them to leave. Is that the policy here? Tak. Jest to możemy, że wynik z innych klas po prostu nie wchodził do lokali tam, gdzie my na przykład przysiadujemy, ponieważ sobie nie zwolnimy do tego, żeby ktoś tam siedział. Most of the gang are unemployed, but a few of them earn extra cash by working as bouncers in clubs and bars. Even on a night off, they're prepared to put in a bit. Of One thing that history tells us is that the right wing rises in times of economic downturn. I find it astonishing with this country's past that some people here can behave like this. Nazi dogma makes it easy to blame others and picking on self targets gives them status. It's the morning after the night before with the neo-Nazis, and why I detested everything they stand for, they actually seem to like me. So the Python brothers have invited us round for a cup of tea. Three generations live in the Python household. Here, above a bakery, in a tiny three-room flat, live five adults, a baby, and a dog. How are you doing? Hello? Hello. Should we... Hello. Yeah, thank you. Come on, dog. Yeah, that's your phone going. That's Zeke Heil. It says Zeke Heil when it goes off. Tak, tak. Your ringtone is a speech from of Hitler. Tak, tak. Gus Hitler. There's some other stuff here. 
There's a swastika there. Uh, and that's an SS armband. And there's a spoon with a um, German Wehrmacht Nazi stamp on it. And this is Mum, yeah? yeah? Pleased to meet you. You're very proud of your two boys, your two twins? No, z bliźniaków tak, z chłopaków też, no ale to co robią to nie. Do you get worried? Oczywiście. Mm. Czy wrócą, czy nie wrócą, czy kogoś tam komuś krzywdę zrobią. To jest, mm. to jest taki instynkt matczyny, to jest... Python 2 makes pizzas part time. He's the only earner in the household. He, his wife and his baby live in one of the rooms. So how did you two meet each other? And when did you get married? <laughs> so it was love at first sight. <laughs> really? And now you've got some big responsibilities, eh, Pito? No, czy chciałem o tym, zawsze o tym marzyłem i trzeba sobie jakoś radzić. Does it worry you now, you know, him going off to the matches? Boję się, czasem każdy mu wybierać, rodzina albo mecz. A co wybierał, to się pan go spyta. Inaczej nie dałoby się żyć. Nie chcę, żeby dziecko poznało później ojca za kratkami. Ona ma roczek, po paru latach, gdyby on wyszedł z więzienia, no prawdopodobnie by go już nie poznała. Nie, wiedzia, nie znałaby ojca. After tea with the Pythons, I'm going to put their clout and my neck on the line. It's Saturday, and Stilon Gorzhov are playing at home. The Stilon fighters will definitely be at the match, and this will be my only opportunity to meet them. <laughs> Heading onto their turf at their ground to stand on their terrace. As soon as we arrive, the Steel on Fighters notice the camera. Guys aren't happy about us being here. Um, guys in masks and yeah. bandanas around their mouths. So uh, they saw me kicking off people having a go at the Pythons because we're here. So it may have seemed like a very nice summer's afternoon. There's a very horrible undercurrent in this place. At this minor league match, there are only two to three thousand people. However, the level of aggression surprises me. Guys down the front orchestrating the um, the chanting, and um, I'm next to Python One here, who's been down there to stop people trying to pass from filming. He has some clout here, obviously. The opposition fans arrive under a heavy police escort. With half-time approaching, it would appear they're less interested in watching the game and more interested in the fight to come. The Steel on Fighters now have a target for their aggression. The Pythons have persuaded one of the gang to talk to us on the condition we protect his identity. There's not a lot of you guys over there, but you seem very passionate about it. Yeah. Where is that, why is that passion inside you? These guys, this all 
uh, are from poor uh, funds. Poor yeah. 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 And from the estates, from the estates. Yeah, estate. they yeah. haven't any money and uh, they live on the street. And on the street, the most important is uh, strong, yeah? We spoke to some of the other guys who uh, have got right-wing views. Are, are you of the same feelings? Yeah, I think it's it's my uh, my country, yeah. yeah. And uh, the most uh, important in this country are Polish people, yeah. I'm not Nazi, I'm, uh, but I'm I'm patriot, yeah. I, I, I love my country and my city, yeah. Yeah, of course. What about those lot over there? What do you think about them? The opposition. If they want, uh, we take his uh, telephone numbers and we met in uh, wood or and we fight for uh, 20 to 20 or 30 to 30 people. Do you use weapons or is it fists? No, any weapons. No weapons? No, only hands. All right, so there's, kind of, there's laws and rules inside. Yeah. The strength of the police presence, even at small matches, may have reduced some of the violence on the terraces, but it's also served to push it underground. We've managed to uncover some fight footage which shows the hunger for violence amongst the hooligans. Pre-arranged fights like these take place in secret locations without the knowledge of the police. During these running battles, the reputation of a gang is made or lost. I've seen the level of violence that surrounds Polish football and how the right wing have infiltrated the terraces. Jacek Persky works for an organization called Never Again. They expose officials who turned a blind eye to these extreme gangs. I ask him why they attract so many new recruits. They are looking for uh, for belonging in a group, you know, to identity. Like to identity. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes, of course, it's a economical problems. There's a huge unemployment, and they simply have a lot of time to and must do something in their life. And it might be a reason for them to 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 to, to do something, you know going on the stadium, looking for a fight. All the hooligans that I've spoke to uh, espouse right-wing views. Is there a connection between the football hooligans and the Nazis? Some of the far-right uh, organizations, they've got some, uh, let's say, volunteers, uh, people who are going on the terraces are looking for new members. They know that the terraces, they've got a very good ground there to spread their idea, their nationalistic and uh, racist uh, idea. So do you think the government turns a blind eye to right-wing organizations here? Uh, unfortunately, like for example, uh, All Polish Youth, this is the organization that was recruited uh, through the culture of skinheads. Uh, and in the moment, they are now in the government. So hang on a minute, there are people who are in the government who used to be skinheads? Yes, like for example, Vice Minister of Sport, uh, Radosław Parda, he's the guy who was a skinhead and a, and, a, uh, and a hooligan. And that's just accepted, is it? Unfortunately, it's accepted. Jacek's outspoken views has led him to being placed on a right-wing hit list called the Red List. Poland is a country going through some fundamental changes. Since 2004, almost three million Poles have left to find work and a better life abroad. We're looking at the people that have been left behind. It's not the first time that I've seen a connection between unemployment and gang membership. The Gorzhov gangs were tough, but the hooligans that I'm going to try and contact next are simply in a different league. I'm going back to Krakow just in time for one of the most brutal clashes in Polish football. In a few days' time, Wisła Krakow will take on Krakowia, their most bitter rival. The hooligans of these two teams are the most vicious and the most feared gangs in the country. Here, the hooligans have no rules and there is no honor between enemies. The hatred runs so deep that people are killed. As I walk around, 
it's obvious that there's a street war being fought here as the whole city is plastered with graffiti. John Adkins is a football fan and a tour guide in Krakow. He's going to help me to understand what's behind the hatred here. John? Yeah. Ross, pleased to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. How are you? All right, mate. You tell me a little bit about this town and, and, and the two teams that, that exist here. Well, here in Krakow, we have two teams. Yeah. Uh, one team is called Krakowia, and the other team is called Wisła. And historically, the, the, the supporters in this town have always been in each other's throats, is that correct? Yeah. The supporters of the Krakow clubs had the reputation of having the most, let's say, intense uh, and often violent rivalry in the entire country. This neighborhood right now is very much a Krakowia neighborhood. Yeah. As you can see by the walls. So, John, Krakowia, that's pretty self-explanatory. Right. But something's been written after it, hasn't it? And yeah, crossed right. out. Over here, we can see where a Viswa supporter put Kurva after Krakowia, which means something like whore. So, Krakowia whore. But this town differs from other places we've seen in Poland, doesn't it? In terms of the hooligan element. Yeah, that's right. Elsewhere in Poland, there's an informal agreement among supporters not to use weapons when they fight. But here in Krakow, they do. Knives, baseball bats, sticks, pipes, anything that yeah. can uh, be useful in a fight. And do they, do they have the prearranged fights that we've, we've seen in other places? No, they don't. Uh, actually, here in Krakow, they have something called polowania, which means like um, hunting, something like that. And they just go around in packs, 5, 10, 12 people or more, and just look for supporters of the other team to fight with. John and I now cross into a Vizwa neighborhood. And here we can see a rather large mural identifying this as very much a Vizwa neighborhood. We can see the white star of Vizwa in the middle, and it says, uh, we'll show you a feeling or a vision that you've never known, uh, loyalty. It's Viernosh, loyalty or fidelity. Yeah. What's the what of it say? Today an enemy, yesterday a brother. What does that mean then, Jack? Do you know? Well, you know, you can be in the Viswa <clears throat> family, the Viswa club, the fraternity, but if you cross them, if you leave it, you're no longer a brother, you're, a, you're an enemy. So it's a threat? Something like that, yeah. John, Krakowia and Viswa are playing each other in a couple of days. What, what's this town going to be like when that happens? It's incredible. Police everywhere in full riot gear, shields and batons, helmets. Uh, Horse-mounted police, water cannons. It really is like uh, like martial law has been declared. It's that threatening. The atmosphere is really that heavy. It's, it's, it's amazing. In two days' time, the city will hold its breath as the fans of these two deadly rivals do battle. I'm going to be there to witness the main. It's my third week in Poland, trekking down some of the most dangerous football hooligans in Europe. Surprisingly, some of them live in the beautiful old city of Krakow. Throughout its history, Krakow has played host to many invading forces. And for many here, it's still reeling from the impact of a communist rule that left it isolated from the West for over 40 years. Historically, Krakow has been the home of Poland's artistic and intellectual elite, whose views contradicted Stalin's communist ethos. In one of the first examples of social engineering, the gigantic Lenin steelworks was constructed on the edge of the city. It provided employment for over 35,000 workers who came from all over Poland. To house them and their families, a Soviet-style suburb called Nova Huta was built. In 1989, the Polish people won their freedom, but their industry paid the price, losing its economic protection. Today, Nova Huta suffers chronic unemployment and is now home to some of Europe's most violent football hooligans. The gang are reluctant to speak to us. The big Wiesla Krakowia clash is tomorrow and security is being stepped up all over the city. John has been trying to arrange a meeting. Eventually, we make some progress with the Wiesla gang. They instruct us to drive to a quiet part of Nova Huta and wait for their call. We're just about to arrive at the location where we've uh, arranged to meet um, uh, the hooligans. Um, we've got about five minutes before they're supposed to be here.
No jak? Dlaczego? Co się stało? Będziemy. Alright. Na razie. Cześć. What was that? Not gonna be here at three, you're gonna be here at seven. <laughs> like herding cats. Three hours later they call, telling us to head to a different part of the city. We spent weeks tracking down the Vizwa hooligans. This gang is violent, unpredictable, and unfortunately, they're calling all the shots. Uh, we've just seen three guys uh, up the road uh, in Balaclavas. So, uh, unless we're about to meet the provisional IRA, I think they're our boys. Dobra, więc jeszcze czekamy, tak? Ok, dobra, czekam na telefon i pójdą tam jak... Ok, dobra, czekam. Yeah, but he says he's waiting on the rest of the guys to show up and... because they don't like strike the numbers and when they all show up, they'll call me. I'm supposed to go there alone. Then... Well, I, I can't come with you. That's what he says. But... He says that there are eight guys that are waiting to talk to us. Can we go with them? And we can take the camera with us, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we can go. We can go now. As we walk out to meet the gang, we see another 15 of them on top of a nearby building, watching our every move. The good is a bit of you, mother. Please don't film the top. No, These guys who are on the building are not Don't film the top. No, no, they'll just be on, no, on, me, on me, yeah. So I'm going to ask you some questions, if that's all right. Um, first question is, could you identify yourselves? Not your names, obviously, but who you are and what team you support. Yeah, yeah and you're hooligans, yeah? What kind of things do you get up to, then, when, you're, when you go to a football match? Nothing. So you're hooligans, but you don't do anything. I don't understand. We don't look at each other when we say something. We watch something. We watch something. We watch something. No, I'm not expecting you to. I just ask what you do. It's not a good sign that my questions are irritating them. We're outnumbered, and I'm told they all carry weapons. So, um, do you have? Uh, is there another team in this town? Obviously, that you, that you have enemies in this town. And the biggest enemy is Krakow. Yeah. Um, why, why are they your enemy? If you were walking down the road on your own and you saw a, a Krakowian fan, would you want to attack him? Do you attack him? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And that's the reason that we came here, because this town is famous in the whole of Poland because of this situation. But what I don't understand is why it exists. I don't understand why the hatred is. You can always say that's the way it was handed down, but why is there such hatred? Why is it so extreme here? Why is it more extreme here in this area than it is anywhere else in Poland? Tutaj są najbardziej fanatyczni kibice. No właśnie. Nie, no tutaj są wojownicy. Tutaj są dwa kluby, które Warriors. zaostrzają środki. Najstarsze kluby Walczy... w Polsce. Tak, na sprzęt. To jest najdłuższa dole. wojna. To jest życie nasze. To jest życie, nie? No. I życie jest piękne. Każdy yeah. wybiera drogę. My wybraliśmy taką. Dobra, po co tu gadać? To głupie pytanie. Dlaczego? No tam. All right, all... No, sorry about the stupid questions. They start to argue amongst themselves, and the mood goes from bad to worse as they threaten to hurt the crew unless the camera is switched off. Stop recording, stop recording. Switch off the camera, switch off the camera. Well, 
they were pretty intimidating. Um, but it seems to me they've actually forgot what they're fighting about. Um, and this ongoing war, I suppose it gives them credibility and identity, um, a bit of kudos. Uh, and without it, well, they probably have nothing. Um, and if that's what they're like on an average day, can you imagine what they're like when the two teams play against each other? Today is the biggest match of the season. Krakowia invite their bitter rivals, Vizwa, into their stadium. With an hour to go before kickoff, Krakowia fans are gathering outside their ground. The opposition fans supporting Vizwa are due any minute. The police are desperate to keep the fighting gangs apart. Amid massive security, the Vizwa fans are busted. They've just loaded the shotguns. Here we go, watch out, there's bottles coming. Watch out. It's certainly the ante's certainly gone up. Watch out for this stones, mate. Watch. I'm just telling you, hang on, wait, wait, watch for your head. The Krakowia fans try anything to get to their sworn enemy. They know this could be their only chance to make an attack. Inside the ground, they will be kept apart. You can see the bottles coming over the top there. The guys will be throwing the bottles, hurling the bottles at the income, the Vizwa fans, just to make an assault. But, you know, but it's. Um, See what happens now. Let's follow this lot. Oh. Watch out, I think we should get out of the way right in the middle here, boys. Let's move. I just say something, that was really one of the, I keep doing very silly things, but that, we just managed to walk ourselves into the crossfire between the two opposing teams. Really bright, Ross. Have I said that? And then there's a lady doing a the rubbish. There's a lady ticking out the rubbish, look. You've seen it all before. With the game underway, the fans mount an attack. Series of flares going back and forth from the, uh, the Krakowian fans over into the Vizwa. Not for the first time um, in a Polish football match, the game has been stopped. That's the manager of the Krakowian team, and the manager has just been screaming at the fans, the Krakowian fans, to give him, give him and his team a bit of a break. Since we started making this film, it's been announced that one of the countries that will host the European Championships in 2012 will be Poland. Supporters of Europe's top 16 footballing nations will come to Poland in great numbers and policing them will be a challenge. Police now have actually moved in to the, uh, the hardcore supporters of Kobe and Hartford. They're actually moving them back in so they can't throw stuff at the visa. Here in Poland, most of the real supporters come to show their devotion in an energetic but non-violent way. That said, the hooligan problem exists at every level in Polish football. to blame economic disadvantages or the political climate. But solutions need to be found. 
in 2012, Europe's top footballers will turn up to play the beautiful game. Advertising and sponsorship will earn Poland millions of euros. I just hope that some of the revenue generated filters downwards to help alleviate some of the social problems that underpin the hooligan element here. The majority of fans are law-abiding and just want to watch a great game of football. Let's hope by 2012, it's their voice that's heard above the hooligan minority. This is the last episode of this series of Ross Kemp on Gangs. You can see here on Sky anytime on TV, but you can see the rest of season three on Monday nights exclusively on Sky One and in HD on Channel 175. Find out more about the series and see video exclusives at skyone.co.uk.